Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Monday, April 27th, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast every week for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. This week, we have updates for you from the FDA for approval of Pemazire for the treatment of cholangiocarcinoma and new indications approved for Imbruvica and Trodelvi. We'll also be giving an update on the coronavirus epidemic and flu season to date. Let's get started with the first one. The FDA granted accelerated approval to Pemigatinib, which goes by brand name Pemazire, the first treatment approved for adults with certain types of previously treated advanced cholangiocarcinoma. Cholangiocarcinoma is a rare form of cancer that forms in bile ducts, which are the slender tubes that carry the digestive fluid bile from the liver to gallbladder and small intestines. Today's approval is for patients with cholangiocarcinoma that is locally advanced. That's when cancer has grown outside the organ it started in, but is not yet spread to distant parts of the body, or metastatic, and who have tumors that have a fusion or other rearrangement of a gene called fibroblast growth factor receptor 2. At diagnosis, a majority of patients with cholangiocarcinoma have advanced disease, meaning that the disease is no longer treatable with surgery. For those patients until today, there have been no FDA-approved therapies. A combination of chemotherapy drugs has been the standard initial treatment. FGFR2 fusions have been found in the tumors of approximately 9-14% to of patients with cholangiocarcinoma. Pemazire is a tablet that works by blocking FGFR2 in tumor cells to prevent them from growing and spreading. Pemazire's approval was based on the results of a clinical trial that enrolled 107 patients with locally advanced or metastatic cholangiocarcinoma with an FGFR2 fusion or rearrangement who had advanced prior treatment. During the clinical trial, patients received Pemazire once a day for 14 consecutive days, followed by 7 days off in 21-day cycles, until the disease progressed or the patient experienced an unreasonable level of side effects. To assess how well Pemazire was working during the trial, patients were scanned every 8 weeks. The trial used established criteria to measure how many patients experienced a complete or partial shrinkage of their tumors during treatment. The overall response rate was 36%, with 2.8% of patients having a complete response and 33% having a partial response. Among the 38 patients who had a response, 24 patients had a response lasting 6 months or longer, and seven patients had a response lasting 12 months or longer. The most common adverse reactions occurring in patients who receive Pemazire are electrolyte disorders, including hyperphosphatemia and hypophosphatemia, alopecia, diarrhea, fatigue, nausea, constipation, dry mouth, abdominal pain, and dry skin. Ocular toxicity is also a risk of Pemazire. The FDA granted this application priority review and breakthrough therapy designation, which expedites the development and review of drugs that are intended to treat a serious condition when preliminary clinical evidence indicates that the drug may demonstrate substantial improvement over available therapies. Pemazire also received orphan drug designation, which provides incentives to assist and encourage the development of drugs for rare diseases. As a condition of the accelerated approval, the sponsor will complete and submit the results of a randomized trial demonstrating an improvement in progression-free survival or overall survival as a post-approval requirement. The FDA granted approval of Pemazire to Insight Corporation. The FDA this week also added a new indication for ibrutinib, which goes by brand name Imbruvica, 
This will be the 11th FDA approval in six years for the product. Imbruvica is now approved for use in combination with rituximab for the treatment of previously untreated patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia or small lymphocytic lymphoma. This review was conducted under Project Orbis, which we discussed in previous episodes. For this application, a modified Project Orbis was undertaken because of the timing of submission to other regulatory agencies. Nonetheless, the FDA is collaborating with the Australian Therapeutic Goods Administration, Health Canada, and Swiss Medic as they review the application. The approval is based on positive results from the landmark Phase 3 E1912 study, which was designed and conducted by the ECOG Akron Cancer Research Group and sponsored by the National Cancer Institute, which is part of the National Institutes of Health. This is the third Phase 3 randomized study in the treatment of previously untreated CLL patients incorporated into Imbrubica's prescribing information. The E1912 study demonstrated previously untreated patients with CLL lived longer without disease progression, as measured by progression-free survival, with Imbruvica plus rituximab compared to those treated with the comparator of fludarabine, cyclophosphamide, and rituximab. The combo is commonly known by the acronym FCR. At a median follow-up of 37 months, Imbruvica plus rituximab significantly improved progression-free survival compared to FCR. Extended follow-up results from the E1912 study were most recently presented in the session at the 2019 American Society of Hematology annual meeting. The most common adverse reactions in patients receiving Imbruvica were thrombocytopenia, diarrhea, fatigue, musculoskeletal pain, neutropenia, rash, anemia, bruising, and nausea. The recommended Imbruvica dose is 420 mg taken once daily. The FDA this week also granted accelerated approval to Sacituzumab, which goes by brand name Trodelvi, for the treatment of adult patients with triple negative breast cancer that has spread to other parts of the body. Patients must have received at least two prior therapies before taking Trodelvi. Trodelvi is a trope 2 directed antibody and topocimerase inhibitor drug conjugate, meaning that the drug targets the trope 2 receptor that helps the cancer grow, divide, and spread, and is linked to topocimerase inhibitor, which is a chemical compound that is toxic to cancer cells. Approximately 2 of every 10 breast cancer diagnoses worldwide are triple negative. Triple negative breast cancer is a type of breast cancer that tests negative for estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors, and human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 protein. Therefore, triple negative breast cancer does not respond to hormonal therapy medicines or medicines that target HER2. The FDA approved Trodelvi based on the results of a clinical trial of 108 patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer who had received at least two prior treatments for metastatic disease. The efficacy of Trodelvi was based on the overall response rate, which reflects the percentage of patients that had a certain amount of tumor shrinkage. The ORR was 33.3% with a median duration of response of 7.7 .7 months. Of the patients with a response to Trodelvi, 55% maintained their response for 6 or more months, and 16% maintained their response for 12 or more months. The prescribing information for Trodelvi includes a box warning to advise healthcare professionals and patients about the risk of severe neutropenia and severe diarrhea. Healthcare professionals should monitor patients' blood cell counts periodically during treatment with Trodelvi and consider treatment with a granulocyte colony stimulating factor, which stimulates the bone marrow to produce white blood cells called granulocytes and stem cells and releases them into the bloodstream, and should initiate anti-infective treatment in patients with febrile neutropenia. Additionally, healthcare professionals should monitor patients with diarrhea and give fluid, electrolytes, and supportive care meds as needed. 
Tradelvi may need to be withheld, dose reduced, or permanently discontinued for neutropenia or diarrhea. Tradelvi can cause hypersensitivity reactions, including severe anaphylaxis. Patients should be monitored for infusion-related reactions, and healthcare professionals should discontinue Trodelvi if severe or life-threatening reactions occur. If patients experience nausea or vomiting while taking Trodelvi, healthcare professionals should use antiemetic preventative treatment to prevent nausea and vomiting. The most common side effects for patients taking Trodelvi were nausea, neutropenia, diarrhea, anemia, vomiting, decreased appetite, and abdominal pain. Trodelvi was granted accelerated approval, which enables the FDA to approve drugs for serious conditions to fill an unmet medical need based on a result that is reasonably likely to predict a clinical benefit to patients. Further clinical trials are required to verify and describe Trodelvi's clinical benefit. The FDA granted this application priority review and breakthrough therapy designation, as well as fast-track designation, which expedites the review of drugs to treat serious conditions and fill that unmet medical need. And finally for you this week, an update on influenza and coronavirus. For influenza this year, the CDC now estimates that in the U.S. so far this season, there have been at least 39 million flu illnesses, 410,000 hospitalizations, and 24,000 deaths from the flu. 169 deaths have been reported in children. Nationally, flu activity is now low, with only eight states now reporting high or very high activity still. For coronavirus, and these numbers are as of Sunday, April 26th, the coronavirus death toll rose to 205,656. That's up almost 25% since last week. And the number of confirmed infections rose to 2,965,711 worldwide. That's a 24% increase over last week. The United States now has almost 1 million coronavirus infections. And there are now 54,941 confirmed deaths from the coronavirus in the U.S. We'll keep you updated every week as things continue to evolve with the spread of the coronavirus. And that's all I have for this week. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.